Hi there, Michael Volishinovich here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me via the social media links below and also at vibrantshot.com. So in this quick tutorial, we're going to be looking at the gradient map tool and how it relates to color grading and black and white conversion. Now, if you already have my color grading course from Retouching Academy, I'll link that down below in the description, uh, you'll notice that I didn't really talk a great deal about the gradient map there because I never personally found really good uses for that tool. And I always found it a little bit convoluted. And I think a lot of people fall into that category and they just end up skipping over it. Now, the more I've played with it, the more I've kind of found an interesting use for it. And that is what I want to share with you in this video. So we're going to start off with a black and white conversion on this image. So let's go ahead and add a gradient map. And we're just going to do that by clicking this icon here. Uh, you can do it through this drop down as well, but that is just kind of dropping off of my screen. So um, you can't really see where I'm selecting, but there's an option there for gradient map. So the first thing it does is it just picks some sort of random gradient here, which we don't really want. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and it's going to open up our gradient editor. And we're going to select this black to white gradient. And what that is basically doing is it's just saying we want to apply of various shades of gray across the luminosity range. So at the very darkest point here, we're going to be applying black at the very lightest point, we're applying white, and anything in between is going to be various shades of gray. And so that's all we really do with a gradient uh, map, we're just basically mapping a certain color to a certain luminosity. And that's really all there is to it. So as it kind of stands, it's not terribly helpful, because we don't really get a great deal of control. I mean, all we can really do is sort of move this around and, you know, clip more of the blacks or move this back and sort of adjust how we're clipping over here within, you know, sort of the midtones are becoming highlights. So I just want to add two extra control points. So just clicking there gives you an extra point. And from there, we're going to just select the blacks. So this automatically turns into an eyedropper and we're going to just pick the black end here. Then we're going to add another one here and select whites. And this gives us that sort of high fashion-y, high contrast type of black and white conversion that you see quite often actually in fashion. Now we can adjust this obviously by continuing to sort of move these around and you know that will sort of determine what gets clipped and what doesn't. The more we bring the highlights in here, the more of the midtones we're going to see. So this actually kind of looks nice if that's the black and white conversion that you like. Uh, for me, that is a little bit aggressive. So what we can do to tone that down is we're going to click OK here and we're going to add a black and white adjustment layer. So let's go ahead and add that over top. And as you can see, that hasn't really done anything. But what it allows us to do is now start scaling back our gradient map so we can take the opacity and start bringing it down to a level that is a little bit more pleasing for us. And for me, if we bring it to, let's say, 50% here, I think that looks quite nice. And if we just sort of toggle on and off, we can see that it introduces a lot of contrast for us, but not so much that we're blowing out all of the details on the highlights and the shadows. So that's really it when it comes to using gradient maps for black and white conversion. So let's go ahead and move on to our next example where we're actually going to use it for the purposes of color grading. Now, one thing I do recommend is if you find yourself using this gradient map solution often is to make a new action for yourself that creates the gradient map with the two control points added automatically. That way you don't have to keep creating it every single time. Uh, I've got one over here and I can post my action if you'd like. If there's enough requests for it in the comments, I'll put it in the description. But it is really simple to create your own. Just basically start a new action, record yourself creating the gradient map like we did in the first example, name it, and it's always going to be there for you when you need it. So if we go in here now, we can see that we've got our two control points added. We can adjust them as desired. Of course, you don't have to. You can leave it as the default. And then you're ready to start using your gradient map for the black and white conversion or for color grading. So for color grading, I tend to use this more as a finishing technique. Once I've got all of my colors dialed in, I sort of use this to determine, you know, what level of um, luminosity I want or what level of contrast I want to finish off the image. So the first thing we're going to do is knock down the opacity of the gradient map to something like 30%. Um, that'll allow us to see uh, the effect of the gradient map, but not be too dramatic. And generally, I find for color grading, I'm usually in between 10 and 40% on the opacity here. So it really depends on uh, the type of adjustment you're making. And of course, um, the, the type of image you have, if it's already really contrasty, or, um, you know, really high key, it'll be a very different opacity that you'll end up using. So in this case, as you can see with this applied, it already looks pretty good. It's a little bit more desaturated. Uh, the skin tones have become a little bit more brown in color. Um, but generally, we're going to use this with a couple of different blending modes. So the first one is multiply. And that's one that I oftentimes like to use. Again, you can see that it has really kind of darkened things down. Uh, multiply will always darken everything down. It's not going to lighten anything for you. But again, it makes the skin tones a little bit more pleasing and a little bit darker. And of course, you can adjust that opacity as you see fit. 
On the flip side of that, we have the screen blending mode, which is going to be useful if you're creating a very high key image. This one started off somewhat high key, so this works pretty well here if that's what you're after. And again, this is always gonna brighten everything. It's not gonna darken anything. So like I said, it's kind of the opposite of the multiply blending mode. With soft light, that can be used if you wanna add contrast on both ends of the spectrum. So if you want to add more contrast on the shadows and the highlights, this will do that for you. Overlay will do the same thing, but a lot more intense. So it's kind of like a combination of screen and multiply together, um, where it's going to apply a lot of contrast to the highlights and a lot of contrast to the shadows. So if you're gonna use overlay, just make sure you knock the opacity down to something a little bit more reasonable because this looks a little bit too harsh. And then uh, we have the luminosity blending mode, which I find works sort of in between soft light and overlay. It's uh, definitely stronger than soft light, but not as strong as overlay. So again, play around with it and see if you like the look of it. And the last one is saturation. And as you can see, basically that desaturates our image, but I find that it does it in a more pleasing manner than just using the saturation slider in hue saturation, especially when it comes to a portrait or fashion image. Uh, I find it can look pretty good under certain circumstances. Now, obviously this opacity is too high for the saturation adjustment, but we're gonna use it in a minute here and you'll see that it can work quite nicely. So we've covered off kind of the ones that I would typically use. So we're gonna use multiply for this particular example because I think it looked nice. And we're just gonna knock this down to something like 20%. And then we're gonna hit Command or Control J to duplicate that gradient map. And this one we're going to use under saturation blending mode. And then we're gonna turn that down to 10%. So one thing you'll wanna do here is once you're done, just name them sat and then uh, you know something like Luma, just so that you know which one is doing what. And then using Command or Control G, we can group those two adjustments together. So if we toggle that on off, you can see the effect of those two gradient maps together. It just made the image a little bit more dark, made it look like it has a little bit more contrast, made the skin tones a little bit more brown in nature and a little bit more desaturated. Of course, we can continue to play with that by adjusting this from, uh, for example, multiply to soft light, um, overlay, luminosity blending mode or screen just to kind of get some different effects. And one other thing we can of course do is go into here and start playing with some of these control points to see what effect that has as well on the final image. So certainly try some of those different combinations on your own images and hopefully they will make you fall in love with the gradient map a little bit more. And I certainly found it to be a fairly useful tool the last couple of months I've been using it. And now there is, of course, a whole lot more to the gradient map tool. You can use it to apply different tonalities across this luminosity range. But I really just wanted to present you with a simple example and show you how you can combine this with the various blending modes to achieve some effects that are not perhaps as drastic as what you normally see with the gradient map. But certainly try it out with different colors, maybe one tone across here and see how that changes the look of the image. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up below and make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you get future updates just like this one. Bye for now.